Peter Barlas here, cardiologist. So today's video, I wanted to focus on a relatively commonly performed scan that we use nowadays in cardiology when we're assessing patients who might have symptoms such as chest pain. And that's a CT coronary angiogram. So let's find out a little about what this scan is. Now, traditionally, when we perform a coronary angiogram, you will have this performed in hospital via a technique, usually through the radial artery, the pulse here in the wrist. From there, a tube or a catheter is placed, and then we inject dye around the arteries of the heart with an x-ray machine moving around you that takes the pictures. Now, that is the gold standard way to perform a coronary angiogram, which gives us an exact idea about whether there are any irregularities or blockages involving the arteries around the heart. Now, these days we can have similar information to the angiogram by using dye and an x-ray machine. However, this is performed in a non-invasive way using a CT or a computer tomography machine. Now, you might have had a CT scan for other things, tummy pain, back pain, so forth. But uh, this scan is performed in a diagnostic or a radiology center, and it does involve some dye. And in, you'll have a cannula placed into the vein, and through that you will have an amount of contrast or dye material pass through from the vein, which eventually travels through our heart into the arteries around the heart, and then they are scanned with the x-ray machine on the outside. Now to have good images of the CT scan, we have to ensure that your heart rate is on the slower side. So the slower the heart is beating, the scan provides us far more clearer images. So in many situations, you may be prescribed for 24 hours prior, a medication called a beta blocker. And the use of the beta blocker is there purely to help reduce your heart rate. So when your heart rate is around 60 beats per minute or lower, well, then the scan provides us very, very accurate pictures of the arteries of the heart compared to, say, when your heart rate might be going quite fast, 80, 90, 100 beats per minute. Well, with the repetitive and fast motion of the heart, the scan is unable to accurately pick up any particular blockages that you might have. Now, the CT scan is not for everybody. It is a useful test when we're exploring somebody that has some risk factors for heart disease, but the symptoms are not very convincing, but there might be some chest pain. And the test itself can be a very useful one to rule out any significant blockages. And if it comes back clear, no problems, well, then it's very, very reassuring. However, if the, you do have symptoms that are suggestive of a possible blockage or a narrowing or a condition known as angina, well, then your doctor may elect to directly refer you for an angiogram in hospital. And that's, as I said, the gold standard way. But the CT scan can be very useful. There are alternative tests that your doctor may select prior, including stress tests, and we've had a video on what the stress tests are, but the CT scan is a very useful way. There is some radiation exposure with the CT scan, so we've got to be mindful of that, and also mindful, as I said, about getting the heart rate as low as possible. If you do have an allergy to contrast or dye, well then, this is not the appropriate test for you, and although we can control most types of allergies nowadays, have a chat with your doctor about any alternative tests that may be relevant for you. So hopefully you found that useful. It's a very useful test. It can also be combined with a calcium score. And we've had a separate video on what a calcium score is. The calcium score essentially is the test that we can do prior to the angiogram, prior to being given the dye through the vein. And that looks at the arteries on the outside, whether there's any plaque or calcium. Well, the CT angiogram with the use of dye looks at the pictures and the arteries on the inside of the arteries to give us a good idea as to whether there is a blockage and whether you may need to have further tests 
such as an angiogram. Till the next video, bye for now.